Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Indizor Education. Continue talking about dispersion of light. Uh, today's lecture will be about dispersion uh, when the light goes through a prism. Uh, we are talking about triangular prism. Right regular triangular prism where the bases are um, regular triangles, equilateral triangles, and the edges are perpendicular to the bases. Now, this lecture is part of the course called Physics for Teens, presented on unizor.com. I suggest you to watch this lecture from the website. Um, well, not only because it's completely free and there are no advertisements and no strings attached, it's because um, it, it's a course. So, this lecture is part of the um, uh, topics, and topics are part of the um, like bigger parts. Um, and then there is a prerequisite course called Mass for Teens on the same website. Mass, is, mass knowledge is mandatory for um, studying physics. Like today, for instance, we will talk about some trigonometric uh, properties. Um, what else? Uh, so the website also has exams, which you can take as many times as you want. So in any case, it's it's really much more advantageous for you to to go through the website and through the menus one after another, one lecture after another. You choose in this particular case from the home page from the unizor.com. You go to Physics for Teens course, for for example. Go to the part called Waves, and then uh, Phenomena of Lights. This is one of the lectures about Phenomena of Lights. So anyway, um, let's go back to our uh, dispersion things. Now, in the previous lecture about dispersion, we will talk about dispersion against the flat surface, flat glass. And then um, we basically explained how different colors having different wavelengths are going through the border between, let's say, air and glass, and they are dispersed. There is an angular dispersion. Why? Because we are dealing with different wavelengths, and because of that, different wavelengths have different speed of propagation in certain substances. Well, in all substances except absolute vacuum, um, different wavelengths of light have different speeds. Only in vacuum all the speeds are the same. Why it's a different question? It's kind of complicated. But anyway, that's the fact. And uh, the longer the wavelengths, like red for instance, has a longer wavelength length than violet, um, the faster uh, the light travels. The difference is in, in speed is not really significant, but it exists, and that's what's very important. There is, however, a big difference between the speed of light, let's say, in vacuum, or in air, which is almost like vacuum. There is still some dispersion, there is still some um, differences in speed uh, between different colors in air, but very, very insignificant. But when you go to something like glass or water, the speed significantly diminishes. Speed of light is like 1.5 times uh, less in glass, generally speaking, than in vacuum. And basically that's why we have a deviation from the original direction of the light when the light crosses the border between, um, let's say, air and, 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 uh, and glass. And we all know the law of refraction, which is sine of theta 1 times n1 is equal to sine of theta 2 times n2, where, eight, uh, where at, uh, uh, eta 1 and eta 2 are uh, angles of refraction. 
and N1 and N2 are refractive indices of the substances before and after the border. Let's say this is air and this is glass. And uh, basically they are ratio between the speed of light in vacuum to speed of light in that particular substance, whatever the substance is, air or, or glass or water or anything like this. So this is something which we have learned before. And we also have learned that when the light goes through glass, which has two surfaces, so this is and one again, so air, glass, air, like going through the window glass, it deviates here and then it goes back to original direction but with a shift. So that was in the previous lecture. So this is a flat glass. Now today we will talk about prism. Okay. So let's get rid of this picture and we will draw another one. So um, I will draw the section of the uh, of the prism. So the light goes to a side of the prism. So let's consider the prism goes like this. So it goes this way. This is the ba this is the base, or a section which is parallel to a base. And then there is a ray of light which comes at certain. So this is the white light. Now the white light has the components uh, which we kind of conditionally call red, orange, etc. up to violet. And again my point was that different colors um, have different speed and that's why since the speed is different so the refractive index is different for different colors. Um, then we have different angles of refraction. So again this is a perpendicular so this is our angle of incident of original white light. Now let me just put it a little bit here. This is original direction. This is not the direction this white light propagates, but I will compare it with this one to know the deviation. So, where the light actually is going? Well, it will not go straight. It will undergo certain uh, refraction. Now, you see from here that if the speed is greater, the uh, sign is uh, should be less. It's uh, uh, so whenever you have uh, a, a difference in in speed, let's say this speed is greater than this one, then this sign should be less than this one, right? So basically, what kind of um, deviation we will have? Um, we will have um, using this particular thing. So n one is approximately 1, more or less, because this is air, okay, this is air, and this is glass. So, on this border, the red light would go this way, and blue light and violet light goes this way. Now, why? Well, since the speed of, um, uh, si since the uh, refractive index for a red is less than refractive index for violet, then the angle of diffraction will be correspondingly greater to have this equality, right? Equality should always be there. So if if n two this is violet. Let's say this is violet and N2 is greater than N1. So it means that the 
theta 2 should be less than theta 1. In this case, I'm using alpha, and this would be <coughs> beta red or beta violet. So red would be greater than the violet. Okay, so far so good. This is, now all other colors would be in between, basically. So we have already split our uh, original white light into a uh, certain angle where red and, and, and uh, orange and other colors are kind of separated. But obviously it's not like exact separation between colors. It's a gradual um, change from one to another. But now we have another border. Now this border is from higher speed to lower speed, which means um, that our angle uh, of uh, 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 angle uh, of incident would be greater than angle of um, refraction. Now, we will have here an opposite situation. We are going from lower speed to higher speed, which means we are going from higher index of refraction to lower index of refraction, which means that the angle of incident would be less than angle of um, refraction. So what happens here, let's do it perpendicular, this would be an angle of, I'll put it like beta prime, this is for red, and this um, would be for violet, so this is beta prime. Okay. Now, we are talking about refraction being even greater than incident in this case. From air to, um, to glass, refraction is less than incident. From glass to uh, uh, air, refraction should be greater than incident. So, if this is an incident angle, then this should be greater. And again, if this is an incident angle, which is even greater than this one, that would be even greater here, right? So this is qualitative picture. Now let's talk about numbers. Let's just assume that this is how our prism is oriented and this is the direction of the white light and uh, alpha is equal to, let's say, 30 degrees. Now, why do they choose it? Well, because it's easy to, to take the sign of uh, 30 degrees. So our left uh, side would be sine of alpha, which is sine of 30, which is 1 half. And n1, we are talking about air, so it would be approximately 1. So on the left, I will have 0 0.5. On the right, I will have, OK, for red, um, for red, and red is equal 1.520, and violet is equal 1.538. I do remember it. So for red, I will have um, the angle. So if I will calculate left side as this, right side is sine of unknown angle times so it would be x times 1.520 and for violet it would be x times 1.538 so I will find x from here now this is a sign and then I will find the angle by sign and the angle will be 19.205 degree and 
0.971 degree. So these are, so BR will be greater than, uh, beta uh, R would be greater than beta V. Beta R is refraction for red and beta V would be refraction for violet. Slightly, uh, slightly greater. Very slightly, mind you. I mean, it's like three ten less than three tenths of a degree, which is a very very small difference. But it exists, which means that our white light is splitting into different rays. Each each ray will have its own color. Okay. Now, considering this is a very small um, uh, difference between the biggest and the smallest angle within the vis visible spectrum, we are talking about only visible light, obviously, we might not even just feel it or, or see it with our eyes, this split. But then, as we go further, the split will increase more. Now, for the next one, I have these calculations also done. Um, the split would be um, calculated based on these um, uh, angles. Um, but you see, we don't know these angles, beta prime. We know beta. How can I get beta prime from beta? Well, that's actually very easy. It's just plain geometry. Look at this. A, B, C. Let's say this is P and this is Q. This point is Q. Now, if I know beta, let's talk, ab let's talk about R, uh, red. So I know beta R. That means, since this is a perpendicular, that means that angle B, P, Q is 90 degree minus beta. I'm not using index R or, or B because the calculations are the same. Now, this angle is 60 degree. So from this angle, from B, P, Q, and this angle, I can derive the value of B, Q, P because the total should be 180 degree. So I have to subtract from 180 degree, I have to subtract this and I have to subtract 60, and that would give me uh, angle uh, B, Q, P. And my beta prime is 90 degree minus this one. So I have to do 90 degree minus this one. So what would be as a result? Uh, so this would be 90 plus beta minus 60. So that would be 30 plus beta, 90 minus uh, plus beta. 90 minus this would be 60 minus beta. And this is beta prime. So knowing this, angle, the refraction uh, alpha we know, so we did this calculation, so we know beta, beta r and beta v for red and for um, violet. From this we know the angle of incident on another side of the prism. So the angles will be beta prime r would be equal 60 minus this, which is 40.795, and beta v prime, that's this angle, would be 41.029 degree. Now I can do exactly the same thing as before using the law of refraction. Now I know the incident angles, and I can find these guys. 
Now, in this case, n1 is something like 1.5, and if, if I will multiply sine of this times 1.5, whatever, for, 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 for red it will be 1.520, for v it will be 1.532. Now, in this case, n2 will be equal to 1, because the uh, outgoing ray goes to air, so it's almost 1 from which I can basically derive sine. And here we have a very interesting um, condition, which I myself was first surprised a little bit, but then I started thinking about this and found that that's actually how it's supposed to be. Here it is. If you will do sine of this and times this, and divide by and two by divide by one actually, uh, you will have something which is very close to one. Sine of forty times one point five twenty would be something like zero point nine nine whatever. Very close to one, which means what? Which means that the angle will be very close to ninety degree. So this angle deviation from this perpendicular to this. This would be my gamma r, very close to 90 degree. When I multiply sine of this by this, I had one point something greater than one, and sine cannot be more than one. And I was, again, surprised a little bit, let me tell you honestly. Now, what actually happens is that that's how it's supposed to be under certain condition like this one, for example. This is a practical example, by the way. Um, when you, you know your initial angle of incident, you calculate everything. You see, this will be this angle of incident of this violet uh, ray of light will be significantly large, well, greater than some, um, uh, some, some value, boundary value when this light will be like completely horizontal and a little bit more than that it will not really go out it will reflect here and that's what actually happened here the violet and actually blue as well if you do all the calculations and i have it in my textual part of the of the of, the, uh, of this lecture blue and violet will not go through the angle will be sufficiently large, which multiplied by this will g give us sign which is greater than one which does not exist, and it will be a total internal reflection. So that's what's interesting. So red light will go through, and orange and, uh, and green, but the blue will not, and red and, uh, and violet will not, because their angle would be too large to, um, to go through. Now, but this is a very known property. You have heard about fiber optics. Fiber optics, you have a very thin, um, something like a glass or maybe plastic, I don't know, um, a, a thin tube. And if you um, send a light signal along it, it will be really not very it, it will not really penetrate the wall because it will always reflect within the wall and it will go because of this property because this law dictates that after certain critical value whenever the angle is large enough angle of incident which means angle with the uh, perpendicular to a surface um, it will not go out it will be within the, the within this thin tube, and uh, uh, actually, if you uh, if you are interested, you can go on the internet, and there are some demonstrations. The person took a laser um, pencil, whatever it's called, put it um, at the edge of the um, glass or plastic uh, tube, and you will actually see how the light you will see the, uh, the, the trajectory of the laser light. It will go through um, reflecting uh, from the walls, but not penetrating the wall. And everything goes through the edge. 
that's what fiber optics actually are. So in this particular case, since um, blue and violet will not go out, the whole color of this visible color will be um, towards the red light. It will be not exactly white. It will be a little reddish white. Now, the last thing which um, uh, can be calculated very easily it's it's a deviation of the final ray of light from the original direction after two um, refractions well basically it's very easy first you calculate the deviation of this this angle since you know this and you know this is alpha and this is alpha as well because they're vertical and this is my beta so alpha minus beta would be initial deviation the secondary deviation from this would obviously be um, gamma minus uh, this is gamma and, uh, and uh, this is continuation of this so this would be vertical with this, this would be beta prime, would be minus beta prime. And we know that beta prime is 60 minus beta. So I can just replace it with 60 minus beta. And if you will add these two deviations, which would be alpha plus gamma minus beta and that would be plus beta so minus 60 so this is the total deviation by the way in case of red I have calculated that gamma red is equal to 83.3 degrees very close to 90 degrees we were talking about you see very close to 983. But whenever I was calculating gamma for violet, it was sinus was greater than 1. So basically, you know gamma, you know alpha. Let's say alpha is 3, uh, 30, sorry. Gamma is uh, 83. Minus 60, it will be what about 50 something, 50 something degree. So the final red light would be deviated from original direction by 50 something degree. So that's all about um, double reflection from both sides of the triangle prism. So obviously everybody saw that whenever the sun goes to some kind of a well, triangle or some kind of a prism, um, you definitely see all the colors like a rainbow. Um, now, in the very beginning, I think on the previous lecture I mentioned that rainbow is also a result of this refraction um, and uh, dispersion of the light. Uh, I did not really talk about this. This is something like dispersion on a sphere because every uh, little drop of, uh, uh, of uh, water or vapor or whatever it is um, from which basically a rainbow is formed is a little sphere. But that's subject of the next lecture. Um, so I do suggest you to read um, notes for this lecture. So if you will go to unisor.com, physics 14, uh, waves, um, properties, uh, not properties, uh, phenomena of light. And uh, this lecture is about the, di the dispersion and the prism. Uh, so the notes for this particular lecture contains some tables with numbers for all different colors. This um, angles and uh, a little bit nicer picture so I do suggest you to go to the website and see um, the textual part of this they are always together visual and textual that's one of the game one of the advantages you say you have a textbook basically and the lecture lecture as a presentation okay that's it thank you very much and good luck